Welcome to Trash to Treasure Terrace Tour 2, where I focus on permaculture practices. This is the front of the house. It is on the north side, so it gets a lot more shade, stays cooler, and more. it retains moisture a little bit better, so I have plants that like that better. So we have four honeyberry bushes that are shaded by various plants, including the, the hazelnut, the Japanese maple, and the service berry. We also have back here a gooseberry that also likes shade. You'll see a lot of this plant around. This is comfrey. It is a nutrient accumulator. It's got a long thick taproot that goes deep into the ground and, and accumulates nutrients that shallower annual plants don't really get to. So when the plants get big like this you just chop them down, chop them up, and put them on top like mulch and it feeds the shallower rooted plants with nutrients from deeper into the soil. Up against the house, we have two raised beds filled with hostas. Hostas are edible. They are perennial and they love shade, so they get the most shade. You'll see a lot of logs around because we use logs for garden edging. They work great and they produce a lot of fungus, which is helpful for the soil. Turning around, we have a 55 gallon rain barrel here in the front. Next we'll go to the backyard. Here in the backyard we have a nice big plum tree and are surrounding the plum tree we have peppermint surrounded by a ring of comfrey and daylilies. This prevent grasses from growing on the tree. Grasses suppress the growth of other plants so we like to keep this tree as far away from grass as possible. Uh, being a nice microclimate back here towards the house from the two trees. We have cooler liking plants. Here is our chicken coop and our run. It has orchard netting ar around it. And as you can see, there's sweet autumn clematis that grows onto the coop and over the orchard netting. Not only does it provide shade from the sun, but also provides covering from birds of prey that like to fly through here. We haven't had any problems with them because of it. We also grow comfrey next to the chicken coop so that when the leaves grow high enough that they can be munched on as, as the birds see fit. I also allow some weeds to grow on the opposite side of some of these barriers so that they have something to snack on every once in a while that is green. We move this way, we have our cold frame. A cold frame is like a mini greenhouse. And in here right now we have what's left over of winter rye, which is a cover crop. Cover crops suppress weeds and also enrich the soil. As you can see our yard is nice and packed. And those are things that we like to do. And again, there's a trade-off for yield size, but we have a lot of variety. We also do a lot of time stacking, which means we use one bed for one thing and then another thing, so we rarely have an empty bed. So we may do a, a cover crop, followed by radishes, followed by carrots, followed by tomatoes, and then back to cover crop for autumn and the winter. Moving this way, you can see we have two cinder block raised beds here and the sidewalk as well. The sidewalk is higher than these channels right here which collect water from the sidewalk and water the beds instead of just evaporating off. We compost a lot so we have a nice large compost bin. We are repurposing an old metal swimming pool. And underneath this blackberry, we do a practice called hugel culture. And to make this hill, I had buried some wood, which maintains moisture and also sequesters carbon. 
and it feeds the plant and helps the blackberry bush as well as the other plants that grow on it stay more moist. And here are the chickens. We have six chickens. They have a coop and a run. The run ends a dozen feet or so back to here, except in the winter when all of the plants are done in these garden beds. I extend the run from here all the way back to the compost pile. And what they do over the winter is they fertilize, weed, and till for us. With six chickens at peak, we get a dozen eggs every other day. They also turn things that we can't compost into food that we can eat. When I weed, they eat the weeds and turn that into things that we can eat. As well as their manure makes fantastic compost and soil building. 